The NFL draft can get tricky with how people talk about different skills and different athletic scores and how fast some guy ran or how high some guy jumped. We're going to compare this class's top players that we're looking at that could fit the Steelers in the first round, along with how picking the more athletic players or non-athletic players has worked out for the Steelers over the past decade or so. I'm Chris Carter, Locked on Steelers podcast. Joining me will be Wes Euler of Steel Nation Radio. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find this show on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, and YouTube. If you're watching this video on YouTube, hit the like button on our YouTube video. Hit the subscribe button to get all of our updates from our daily YouTube channel that produces episodes Monday through Friday, as well as our breaking news episodes whenever something happens. We thank you for making the Locked On Steelers podcast your first listen every day. If you want to help us out, go on Apple Podcasts. If it's a five-star review with a positive comment, do both at the same time. We get you a shot at the end of the show. What's up, Wes Euler? He's back from Steeler Nation Radio and the Ears and Beers podcast. As you see, he's repping the WVU. Boo, we don't like that here, but I'm just playing. Uh, but Wes, how you doing? I mean, you're not playing. You don't like that here, but I, I don't give a rat's backside what you like. All right. I mean, you know, it's all right. uh, I'm doing I'm doing well, partner. It's a uh, it's a beautiful week here in Pittsburgh. Feels like maybe the weather's finally turned here completely. Um, we should record one of these things soon. Just you and I outside just drinking a beer, just chilling. What you mean? We're going to be doing that anyway. <laughs> that's, the, that's just what we do anyway. <laughs> um, but Wes, talking about the NFL draft, we're, we're, we're going to continue you know, focusing on the NFL draft. But I want to take a step back. We did some day two picks yesterday. If you want to li- listen about who the Steelers could take in round two and three, Tony Serino and I broke that down for a Tony Tuesday yesterday as far as some of our top picks on offense and defense. Now that we're at West Wednesday, I want to take a different look at things here. Now, I mentioned in the cold open about athleticism and you know, some people are probably thinking like, well, wait a minute, why would they pick a non-top athlete? Well, there's times where players may not grade out well in the combine, but they look phenomenal when it comes to uh, when, it, when it comes to their on-field play. There's guys that you get excited about that you're just like, man, like that guy is absolutely, he's he's going to be good. I don't care what his 40 time was. I'm going to do that. That's what a lot of people are saying about Kyle Hamilton this year, for example. He didn't run the best 40-yard time, 40 yard dash. Nobody cares. There's, he's still going in the top 10, maybe even the top five. But this year, I, I think the Steelers being at 20, they have some interesting questions to ask themselves about who they could pick when it comes to, you know, the athletes that they'll get. Now, I have maintained that, you know, with the quarterback position, we'll, we'll get to that later. There's probably not going to be the guy that they want at 20. So they're going to have to find, you know, a top position player. And one of the positions that we've been looking at, well, two of the positions, defensive tackle and cornerback. That would be some of the players that, you know, that would have players that can immediately address um, the Steelers needs and as well as, I guess, safety as well. But. Jordan, you look at guys like Jordan Davis this year. If you look at he is a physical specimen that's on another level. And if you look at the relative athletic scores that's done by uh, uh, Kenny Platt, uh, you can follow him on Twitter. Uh, I think at uh, math, math, math test bomb. Um, but uh, he he does a great job with his with with his relative athletic scores um, when it comes to breaking things down, making sure that uh, that we understand the measurements out there. Um, and when we compare certain numbers this year to, to certain guys, it opens eyes up. Like for example, Wes, if you asked a lot of people, the top cornerback on the board would be Ahmad Sauce Gardner or Derek Stingley Jr. But Trent McDuffie. Is the highest graded cornerback as far as athleticism because of his 40, he's 4.44 in the 40 yard dash, his vertical leap at 38.5, and the uh, 108, uh, his, his hundredth, his over 100 inches in the, in the broad jump. This man is clearly, you know, doing, you know, did something different there. Stingley, not too far behind him. Uh, if you look at their raw scores, uh, McDuffie was a 9.49 compared to Stingley, who was an 8.98. Those are still elite scores and what you want from your, from a topic at cornerback. But it does beg the question. Question: If you, if the Steelers see a guy that that grades higher athletically and maybe doesn't have that tape, does that change how they should look at, 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 at drafting a certain player? Oh, that's a loaded question. In a in a vacuum, Chris, 
I don't think so. But in the larger picture, it, it has to be part of your decision-making process, right? I think it's kind of how I feel about this, I think, is like the level-headed take to have on analytics in sports almost. Yeah. There's some similarities here where everyone knows what I'm talking about. The back and forth of analytics should be the end-all, be-all. Oh, shut up with your numbers. Just watch the game, right? The, the real answer is is somewhere in between. You should still watch the games and evaluate through that lens. And then you use some of the analytics and some of the statistics to supplement, to back up what you think your eyes are seeing you or what you're hearing about a certain player. I think that's the blend here. If there is someone that the Steelers are very interested in, but one of the cons, one of the knocks on this guy is that he hasn't always been the most athletic. And you're seeing that, you think you're seeing that pop up from time to time where that's costing them on tape, costing them on film. And then you go and look at his RAS score and it's really poor. Okay, then maybe that's a red flag type moment, right? Mm -hmm. If there's a guy that you were thinking, I mean, this guy is just a freak. He jumps off. Have I ever seen anybody like this? Right, Like a Calvin Johnson type dude. And then you look at his RAS score and you see it's like the best that they've ever given out. And then you go, okay, yeah, well, that guy really is just a freak. I think that this is something that teams should use as a tool. It shouldn't be an end-all, be-all. It shouldn't be something that you should completely cast aside. But as you've mentioned, there's been some examples of this in the past with, like, say, for example, a guy like Jarvis Jones, who athleticism was the concern there, and his RAS score was 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 horrible. It was one of the worst of, of that year. Time. It's one of the worst of his positions at all time. Maybe there's some, okay, you could have seen some of these red flags coming uh, going into that. But, but getting back to your original question, I think this is just another – it's another tool in your toolbox, right? You, 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 you should have it as a group of things that you use to evaluate and consider and a part of the process that leads to your final decision and your final you know rankings on that big board. No, I, I hear you on that. And this was part of what I wanted to get into too, Wes, was talking about the historical significance of this. Because like Trent McDuffie, you know, I've talked a lot about how the top three cornerbacks on, on my board in this this year were Sauce Gardner, Derek Stingley, Andrew Booth Jr. But Trent McDuffie's right up there with him. And I, I don't I I feel like I haven't done my due diligence as far as saying that on the show enough, you know, it's so so far this this uh this offseason. But he's right up there with him. And even the more I look at I compare him to Andrew Booth Jr. now because I've been doing more film comparisons between them specifically. And I'm like, you know, I might start leaning a little bit more McDuffie mm -hmm. here. And then also the fact that Andrew Jr. hasn't didn't get to test this offseason. He didn't get to have he wasn't healthy enough to do the combine. He didn't do a pro day with Clemson. So you don't see his numbers. You know what? You might be saying, like, you know what, McDuffie, maybe he is the guy there. But I want to talk about this historical significance, comparing it to past Steelers drafts, especially over the last 10 years or so. Guys that have been major assets to the Steelers or major busts to the Steelers for the Steelers when it comes to the NFL draft. So we're going to talk about that in just a second here on the Locked on Steelers podcast. But first, I got to talk to you guys about one of our great sponsors and one of our newer sponsors. It's called Shady Rays. Bam. That's what they look like when you put them on. Oh, look Sh at you. Exactly, right? Shady Rays. This is also an independent sunglasses company, and they're giving you the features of $200 sunglasses for just a fraction of the price. That means you're getting polarized lenses, well-constructed, durable frames, and premium high-end finishes. Also, something you won't find anywhere else is Shady Rays' insane protection program. Shady Rays inc includes lost and broken protection on every single pair. They will send you a brand new pair if you lose them, no matter what happen give them a try and you don't if you don't love them you'll pay nothing it's simple as that plus 10 meals are donated to fight hunger in america when you shop with shady rays exclusively for our listeners head to shadyrays.com and use the promo code locked on to get 50 percent off or, or off of two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses when you visit shady rays and i'm telling you Wes, when i'm out here and i'm it's out in sunny the sky is a little bit bluer with these polarized sunglasses. It looks a little bit brighter. It looks all vibrant. I dig these sunglasses, and 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 these are something that I'm carrying with me everywhere now. So again, if you want to get your pair, oh no, go ahead. What, what you about? To say? I was just gonna say, all you need is as a nice glass of rum on the rocks, and you're ready for vacation, baby. <laughs> uh, man, I already did that episode back in uh, back in December. What you talking about? <laughs> Those glasses, you have found your beach. It's, it's it's certain indeed. So get your pair of shady rays by going to. To shady to shadyrays.com and when you go there be sure to use that promo code locked on that's l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n locked on for their best deal of the season again 50 percent off two or more pairs of shady ray sunglasses backed by over 150 000 
verified five-star reviews. Again, check out your Shady Rays to get your newest and best sunglasses. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm Chris Carter here with Wes Euler. I'm taking off these sunglasses because I'm indoors and I don't want to keep looking like a goof. But I can't look like a goof with these on. I was but you know, say, it's it's you indoors. Like classic, you look like a classic man. Yeah, thank, but I, thank I see you, what sir. you're doing. You just yeah, don't want to be that guy. You know? uh, exactly. Like I don't want to be the guy that's trying to be too cool too much. Though that's kind of hard to do when you got those sunglasses on. But anyways, I want to get back to this discussion about athleticism and RAS scores and everything like that. Now you brought up a great point about Jarvis Jones. Jarvis Jones that year. He was like the leading sack man in the SEC. He was a destructive force at Georgia. Everyone that saw him was like, yeah, that's the guy. He's going to be a problem. But the the the, 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 anal- the analytics community was like, hold up. Wait a minute. Y'all don't want to do that because he tested terribly at the combine in his pro day. Whereas his height at 6'2 was perfect. His mm-hmm. weight at 245, solid for edge rushers and right where you want him, want him to be. Bench 20, 20 reps at 250, really good for it for, for an edge rusher. But everything else after that was terrible. A 4.88 in the 40-yard dash, a 30 and a half vertical, a 90-inch broad, a, a 4.71 shuttle, a 7.46 three cone. All of those things ranked in the lowest percentile mm-hmm. of edge rushers of all time. With, and they go out to 1987 with these RAS scores. That's mm-hmm. how bad it was. He scored an overall 1.62. That's terrible. And another guy, not as bad, but also not great, who was who's in that realm, Artie Burns. Artie Burns scored a 5.58. That's that's average to below average there because he didn't have a great his 40 yard dash was 4.46 was kind of like uh, you know just a, a hair behind what we're talking about with McDuffie but those hairs do matter you combine that with a 31 and a half vertical which is which is up there with some of the worst that the cornerbacks have ever seen the shuttle time wasn't great with his change of direction his three cone was was very average none of his scores were elite now you go back throughout the rest of the, the Steelers picks. Let's 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 go throughout some of their their better picks over the la- over the last decade or so. Ryan Shazier, twenty fourteen, came out like an athletic freak. He was he was on another level when it came when it came to his his stuff. I believe he placed in the top. He, excuse me. He was the the fourth best RAS score of his year in overall. He uh, he scored a nine point eight eight. That's like almost perfect for what you want a linebacker linebacker to be. Um, and another example, TJ Watt in twenty seventeen of his draft class, he placed in in the top ten. And along with him, crazy enough, Akella Witherspoon was right above him. In the in that in that class, and they are also included with guys like Kevin King, who went to the Packers, uh, Marshawn Lattimore, who's with the Saints and a superstar cornerback. Miles Garrett is 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 in that group. Also, shout out to a Pittsburgh guy, Brian Corey. He was of Carnegie Mellon as a long snapper. He is the highest ever RAS score for a long snapper. So there we go. Uh, so go Tartans, I guess. Um, but. <laughs> Uh, but then also, also you look you you look around um, you know one, there's there's sometimes it doesn't always work out the way that you think it might. A lot of people talk about Terrell Edmonds. Why did the Steelers go get him? Well, in his year, he placed in the top ten in the Ross. And when you did the when you did the score, he had a nine point eight nine, which means that's among some of the best testing you've ever seen for a safety with his height, his weight, his change of direction, his forty yard dash, everything about it. He was one of the best that year and still one of the best when you compare him athletic wise to safety. Now, Terrell Evans ain't a bust in my book. He's he he didn't turn into a star because he's again, he's also a late first round pick. He's not like a 15th overall guy that didn't work out. Uh, you know, like that like Jarvis Jones. You know, Jarvis Jones is a little bit closer to that, a little clo- little bit closer to that quality. Um, yeah. but but when you when you look at Terrell Evans, he's at least been a good player. And he's a guy that they do want back. He's just he wants more money than what they're willing to pay him. And that's what's going on there right now. But I, I look at these examples as like you said, athleticism and these RAS scores and 40 yard dashes and shuttle times and all these things, they shouldn't be the end all be all, but they should be the confirming factor that says, you know what? I'm I, you know, I, I thought this guy was good on tape. I, he confirmed it with his athleticism. All the boxes are checked there, and that's what that that's what I think should be part of the conversation here. That that mixes the perfect mix of analytics with just watch the tape, study the actual football. Yeah, you know you're absolutely right, Chris. And it's it's funny if you go back and I, I just sorted here um, the, over the last five years, okay, for the Steelers. So pretty mm-hmm. pretty relatively recently here over the last five years. 
if you look at some of the names that are at the bottom of the list for the Steelers, I think there's reasons to go both ways, right? Like mm-hmm. one of the worst graded Steelers over the last five years has been Benny Snell. And I think we can all kind of, yeah, you know, he was another, maybe he was the running back version of what you just described with Jarvis yeah. Jones. Yeah. Was in the SEC, put up really impressive numbers, did it by just kind of brute strength and force and not always necessarily, you know, with with quick feet and with athleticism, with technique, those type of things. He was just, they were just strong, powerful dudes who are able to get away with that in a strong, powerful conference. Mm-hmm. Um, Benny Snell being towards the bottom doesn't surprise you a ton there. Uh, Chooks a core four towards the bottom doesn't pr- surprise you a ton there. But then there's also Deontay Johnson is towards the bottom of the barrel of the Steelers' last mm-hmm. five years of draft picks and his RAS score. James Conner as well, too. And when you watch those two play football, I don't think you ever really were concerned about exactly. a lack of athleticism with those two. So, again, you're able to find examples going both ways. Um, but Isaiah Loudermilk didn't grade very well on this. Uh, like I said, Chooks didn't grade very well either. Um, Anthony McFarland not grading very well Trey Norwood with a really low score too so there's some numbers there that again back up what you think you're seeing there's some other that give you pause like again especially Deontay Johnson and James Conner yeah when we when we talk about Deontay Johnson's cons when we talk about his shortcomings it's some concentration (laughs) it's some drop you know it's it's some hands and some concentration stuff when we talk about James Conner's shortcomings it wasn't athleticism it was you know can this guy be a bell cow can this guy stay healthy over the course of an entire NFL season so there's some good there's some bad there you got to take it with a grain of salt but again, I am if I'm a talent, if I'm a talent evaluator, if you know I'm involved in this process, and we all know with the Steelers, there's longer leashes with some of these things. With the Steelers, there's more belief in their guys as opposed to just evaluating the year-to-year process. They hire people that they have belief in for for the long term. But for a lot of talent evaluators across the NFL, we know how quick these jobs can turn over. Scouts, general managers, all that stuff. Um I, I think if you're saying no to certain information, and again, just another tool that you can that you can toss in your tool belt to give you a broader scope, a broader picture of of the entire snapshot of an athlete, um, I, I think this is another useful tool. Shouldn't be your end all be all, but as as we've kind of laid out, there's been some examples there both ways where you've said, oh yeah, you know, some of those red flags were there, and these numbers back that up, and then maybe on some other ones with guys like Deontay and James Conner where. Oh, really? Interesting. You know, athletic red flags. I didn't really see that. So again, it's 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 just another tool that I I think is important to keep an eye on. It certainly it certainly is it is it is, and that's why we talk about these things because we want to flesh things out and we want to help people who are you know fans at home. They want to do their own draft stuff. They want to look at tape. They want to look at look at games. And be like, oh, what if that guy joined the Steelers? And what if that guy joined the right, Steelers? Right. And then they're like, oh, but what about his this? And we're here to help you sort some of these things out and talk about how yeah, those athletic numbers could be really impressive because this happens every year. Everyone falls in love with somebody's forty yard dash time. Everyone falls in love with these numbers and they say, oh, that's that guy. Go get him. And then it doesn't translate because athletes are fast don't always translate to the NFL. You know, speed speed is a, is a talent that you can just naturally have and, and can be a serious threat. But there's been track stars who've joined the NFL and they can't get going because football speed is not the same as track speed. It's just it's just not. And so these things can, like you said, help confirm them. And I, want, I also want to confirm, when I said Trent McDuffie was the, had the best of, of the scores of the cornerbacks, that was simply of the guys who are considered those top-graded first-round cornerbacks. He's not the best overall as far as the Ross scores. There was actually a perfect 10 in Zion McCollum out of Sam Houston State. Um, and uh, and actually, Pitt's own Damari Mathis, he was the, he was ranked number four with a 9.72. There's our guys out there that, that graded very high, but again, these might be guys that you look at in the later rounds and say, you know what, we don't need to go out and get this quarterback in, in round a cornerback in round one because there's these other supreme athletes who we think right. could fit a lot of positions. But you know, Wes, like you brought up, Anthony McFarland, uh, Isaiah Loudermilk, Chooks Akor for all. None of those guys are first round picks. They're third, fourth, fifth, sometimes sixth round picks. That that, that kind of the, there's a, that's the reason that those guys are, are further back. And uh, a guy a guy like Trey Norwood, 
had the most interceptions in college football going into the going into the draft. The reason that he that he was drafted in the seventh round because his athletics uh, athletic numbers were not that great. And if he it, and trust me, if he had those athletic numbers, if he had those things, he would have been first round with all those interceptions. People would have said, "Oh, we're getting that guy right away." But this is the kind of stuff where you saw Norwood. They gave him some roles last year, but they found a way. Like, hey, we want to use these skill sets, but we know he's not a a guy we can just put out there by himself and let him just go at safety because he because he doesn't have those he doesn't have those that the athletic traits that allow him right. to do that right away right. but he does have the football iq the football instincts and the football skills to be a useful player in the nfl and something that you can continue to work on to overcome those shortcomings on the athletic side yeah absolutely and you know what there's examples the other way too you know a guy who tested off the charts for the steelers recently in this regard mm. was justin lane mm. and i don't justin think any of us are, really well. i don't think any of us are incredibly high on on him right now nah. so um, you know, Devin Bush tested incredibly well. Kendrick Green mm-hmm. tested incredibly well. Buddy yep. Johnson, I don't want to give up on him after one year, but he tested yep. incredibly well. So, again, grain of salt, everything, but a, 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 a nice additional tool to have in your in your toolbox whenever you are, you know, draft season and you want to be a dork like us and find all these different possible ways to evaluate and rank guys. I, I feel you on that. And I think that's a great way to put this is is, is it's finding that balance. You know, we, we, you know, talking about, you know, mixing that analytics, be, you know, being dorks because we are dorks here. We are talking about these college guys and, oh, yeah, the 9.72 uh, yeah. you know, it, 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 it go, and going with that and losing our minds over guys. But again, this is what, why we try to give you sensible draft talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers when it comes to you know, when it comes to the Locked On Steelers podcast because you know I'm not trying to just sell you down the road and say oh they're definitely doing this or they're definitely doing that. I can tell you what I think, what I've heard, what I try to put together, and what makes the most sense in my eyes. But ultimately, Steelers are going to do what they're going to do. They might draft a quarterback in the first round. Wes and I have been adamant that I don't think that we don't think they should. <laughs> There's times they go against what they what what we think they yep. should. So, um, you know, so that, you know, things like that happen. Um, you know, a lot of people didn't want to draft Najee Harris last year. I wasn't one of those people, but uh, you know, but that was something that work that that worked out for them at least in the in the in the first year and we'll see how it continues to work out for them moving forward um but there's a we, we're talking about that quarterback position you know we talked a lot about cornerback and trent mcduffie and guys like him who can benefit from those uh those high numbers we got to talk about the quarterback position and take a step back to look at it because i've avoided it for an obvious reason over the last couple of days but i want to at least acknowledge that it is something to talk about coming down the line it's just something that you know, we're going to be a little sensitive or delicate with, uh, you know, careful with how we handle that topic because of, you know, the Dwayne Haskins tragedy. We'll talk about that in just a second Second here on the Locked on Steelers podcast. But first, we got to talk to you about our great sponsors at Built Bar. Built Bar is the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. If you're trying to keep up with your New Year's resolution and it's now, it's April, it's nice out. You're starting to think like, oh man, it's nice out. I don't want to have to keep eating this nasty stuff. Guess what? Built Bar is healthy for you and it ain't nasty. It tastes great in fact. And if you try the Puffs flavors, they taste great too because they're the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They're fluffy, marshmallowy. They're a tasty treat covered in 100, 100% real chocolate and they're yum. They have several, several different flavors like yummy cinnamon churro, coconut marshmallow, Marshmallow, banana cream pie, and you can get any flavor of Built Bar that's also covered in 100% real chocolate. When you do, they come with with an average of 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Compare that to the average candy bar that has 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. That's a huge, healthy difference when you choose a Built Bar over a candy bar. And again, it's going to taste great, so you're you're helping yourself out. You're not feeling like you're you're missing out on anything with a diet while also sticking to that diet. And again, there's so many flavors to choose from from coconut almond to peanut butter brownie double chocolate raspberry cookies and cream salt salted caramel mint brownie all those flavors and more getting released every month when you go to built.com when you go to built.com to order built bars delivered right to your door be sure to use the promo code locked 15 that's l-o-c-k-e-d-1-5 locked 15 and you'll get 15 percent off your next order of built bars when you visit built.com Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm Chris Carter. He's Wes Euler. Now, Wes, um, we, we've done a lot of talking about this. You've done a lot of it on Steeler Nation Radio. Um, I was on with you and Arthur Motes Monday talking about the sadness that is what happened to Dwayne Haskins. There's people, and, and it's still not done. You know, we're still, there's this funeral still to come. And, you know, they, we're still talking about the impact this has, not just on football, but on the life when people think about, wow, like this was a young guy here. But 
I, I, I say this very carefully because I've gotten these questions and people have asked, well, Chris, what does this mean about the quarterback position? And I'm like, man, on the first day, like Monday, I'm not trying to talk about that. No. We're still we're still reeling about that. But I want to take this segment to acknowledge there will be a discussion about the quarterback position now. Because well, there Kevin has to Col- be. Yeah, there has to be. It's just you don't do that the week of the, the man's death. And Kevin Colbert did say. Way back when, when the whole when the, when when we're starting the offseason, the Steelers want to go to camp with four quarterback arms, and you just never account for someone to lose their life like that. You know, yeah. you know, it's it's something that you can't plan for, and that's again the the tragicness outside of the football is like something that like you just think like, oh, I'm going to be around that guy. You know, so there's probably people that said, dang, I I didn't take advantage of hanging out with Dwayne Haskins, you know, or getting to know that guy more. And I thought I was just going to get those opportunities in the near future. So that's the first wave of it and the things that are obviously the impact of it. But best believe the Steelers will be looking at it. By the way, they will honor his contract 100%. The Rooney's are are class acts. They're not going to just say, "Oh, well, that's money back into the um, back into the pool." That's not how the things work. He will be getting paid just like Ryan Shazier was paid the, his the rest of his full contract when he when he was paralyzed and couldn't return to the game of football. But I, I say I say this about the quarterback position. I'm not sure if it if it pushes the Steelers to a first round pick mode because you look at Dwayne Haskins. He was more of the depth guy that was going to – if he became your number one quarterback, it would have been a heck of a story. Sure. But it wasn't something they were banking on to have to happen with their quarterback depth chart, which tells me I don't know if they're going to be any more aggressive because of it. Um, but again, I'm not so sure – because, again, they've already been talking to all the quarterbacks. I'm just not so sure that's something that they're – if they're contemplating it right now or if they'll even do it after they have time to grieve process and think about this going into the NFL draft. Yeah, there's certainly a lot more questions than answers there, Chris. Um, but they will. I mean, they they will, you know, when, when training camp breaks in late July, we all think probably most likely in Latrobe, but hey, could always be in at Heinz Field once again. Um, they're going to have four quarterback arms. That's that's the way they operate. You know, Kevin Colbert wasn't breaking any news when he's he's no. mentioned that a few times. Um, that's that's the way that they go into training camp is with four arms. Now, with the timeline of, of when this has happened, you obviously still have time, um, but you also have had some other options taken off the table, right? Because Josh Dobbs, for an example, right? Yeah. What, what I'm yeah. sure would, would, would be a name that would be very easy. Okay, well... We can bring Josh Dobbs back. We can still draft a quarterback. There's our four arms. Well, Josh, Dobbs, Josh Dobbs is gone. A lot of the maybe the other, if you want to say Dwayne Haskins type, and I mean that in the sense of someone who is, you know, things didn't work out with their first team, and now right. they're trying to stick on somewhere else. Those guys are pretty much gone too. They've, they, they've, they've, been, they've been nabbed in free agency to this point. So, there's certainly some names, you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick is a name that's available. Is he going to want to come to Pittsburgh and be the third quarterback or even yeah. be the second quarterback? Probably not. Um, Mike Glennon, AJ McCarron, uh, Geno Smith, Josh Rosen, right? There's, mm-hmm. there's a bunch of different of these types and they'll have those conversations on all those guys. I don't know if this drastically changes how they feel about taking a quarterback in the first round at pick 20 or moving up, because as you mentioned it, it, it felt like it was going to be Mitch Trubisky one, Mason Rudolph two. And again, Dwayne Haskins is kind of your, he's your third guy who you think has some untapped potential in a ceiling that could potentially, you know, a high ceiling that's, that's potentially there. Um, but I don't think really anybody in the Steelers organization was expecting Dwayne Haskins to, no. to play meaningful snaps in 2022. He would have been involved in training camp. He would have had opportunities there throughout the preseason, certainly, but, but, you know, um, regular season snaps. I don't think that they were really expecting him to be involved in that conversation. So I, I think it's kind of the same thing. I, you know, I think you, you hope someone falls to you at 20, maybe if, if, if you go that route, but that continues to seem more and more unlikely. I don't know if you've seen the reports and this could always just be smoke screens, but there's been reports today out of Carolina that the Panthers really like Matt Corral and they're considering him at pick six. Mm-hmm. And okay. So if that happens, does that push a Kenny Pickett further down the board? Does that push a Malik Willis further down the board? All of a sudden, if Matt Corral's the third quarterback off the board, does that mean Ritter could be there for the Steelers at 20? There's all those questions still. I don't think any of those have really changed in the aftermath of the Dwayne Haskins tragedy here in the last, what's it been five days or so Um, 
the only thing that's really changed with that is, is you're going to have to find another arm somewhere. Um, I, I'm sure that they are having those conversations, but you're right. It even, even five days out, it still feels a little weird. Doesn't it? Having, having that conversation, yeah. but there's, there's some names out there and there's even some, you know, Josh Rosen type, who was another recent first round pick who, who is his, has bounced around from organizations. Um, but I don't think it changes much for pick 20. Um, I, I, I think that they'll they'll have that conversation at some point. All right, who's who's the extra arm that we're going to bring in here and how we want to go about that? But I don't suddenly see them drastically changing their their draft plans be, because of this tragedy. Yeah, I, I don't either. Um, I just I, I, and I think the biggest thing is that they're not even they might not even be worried about that right now. They're they're probably worried about trying to help out the Haskins family as best they can right. and uh, making uh, sure and, all his and, teammates are in a good space mentally. That's what I was going to say, too. It's about helping out teammates. I mean, you just saw the guy the day before he was there working out with you. You saw the the, re- the reaction from Chase Claypool and those guys. I I think that's as, that, that, that may be even more important is making sure that those guys are are OK. Um, cause Completely you never, agree. you never know how stuff like that is actually going to, uh, to, to impact, um, things there. So, uh, thank you. Thank you, Wes, because I, I think that, you know, I, I love to have people that I can trust to bounce these things off with and people who yeah. will be, yeah. um, professional, respectful and thoughtful, you know, and compassionate about players and people. You know, you know, when when we talk about these type of things, because it is that doesn't always happen in sports. Uh, you know, no, it does not. That, we that just, just we just saw that firsthand over the weekend. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we saw tons of people just 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 saying things, and um, and, and those, you know, and just things that I was just like, man, like, is, is this is this where we're at? I'm I'm happy to say that I think for the majority of people, for the for the people that, um, you know, for most people in my circle, that wasn't the case. Um, so I, you know, I'm, I'm proud to say that, that, you know, at least those people that I've surrounded myself with, um, but, uh, but for the, but for the most part, I think that's, that, that, that's where the Steelers are. They've always, yeah. they, they've, they've been that class organization. They've, they've taken care of their guys, um, and they've taken care of their guys' families. I, I, I fully anticipate that to be the case when it comes to not just, you know, the Haskins family, but also the players who are still grieving and dealing with it. And you think about oh, it, they, they've had to do it, unfortunately, a lot lately with Jerry Osofsky's wife, uh, with uh, uh, with the wide receiver coach uh, that, that that passed away a few years ago. You know, you're just you, you, you keep getting, you know, you keep dealing, you keep dealing with those type of things. And Presley Harvin, you know, he lost both, you know, a grand a grandmother and a, and a father in a, in a season. Um, so it's just, um, you know, you know, and you have Daryl Drake diet camp, Tunch Ilkin around the organization Tunch as well, Ilkin, too, geez, in the past year, Tunch, you know, yeah, like, we've been having these, we've been having these conversations too much, man. Jeez. Yeah, it, it's, it's very sad, but no, and that's, um, you're right though. That's the, yeah, the hardest ahead. part. The hardest part about, I think, grieving in general is the acceptance that life still goes on. Yeah. You, you, you know what I mean by that? Like that's, that's the hardest part is that. You know, for all these guys, like there, there's, there's still going to be the NFL draft at the end of the month, and then there's still going to be rookie mini camp, and then there's still going to be OTAs and training camp, and you're going to be reminded of Dwayne every step along the way. There, um, that is one of the hardest parts to cope with and deal with the realities of of loss is that life goes on, and I think a lot of people who have experienced traumatic loss will tell you that. You know, the first few weeks, first few months, everyone's checking in on you, everyone's seeing how you're doing, everyone's there for you. Then eventually that those those wheels of life, those seasons of life just continue. And sometimes you're left looking around going, well, wait a second. You know, like like my loved one, this 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 person that I love, my family member, my friend that I loved is gone and everyone else is still going about their business. And and I'm I'm not over it. I'm still grieving. That's part of this whole delicate thing as well, too. Um, and I, I, I do think, though, that that's one of the things that you have to do in their memory is, is, you know, is, is persevere and continue as, as they would want you to. Um, but there's always, yes, there's much better ways to handle this um, than, <laughs> than we saw from, from many in the national media who were showing their ass all weekend. Yeah. It's uh, again, I'm, I'm glad that we are not of that crowd. Um, and I'm I'm glad that most Amen. of the, the, the Steelers fans that follow this show, people that comment on this show and reply to me, they, they seem very appreciative of the way that we, we approach this thing. And I want you all to know that I appreciate hearing that from you all because I, I take I took very care. I probably took like seven or eight takes of my Monday first response show uh, that was talking about that because I wanted to make sure I did it right. I did it. I did it in the way that would uh, 
that would resonate well and I think strike the right tone for people to talk about this when we're talking about it in Steelers media. So um, I, I'm full confidence the Steelers will, will strike the right tone moving forward, even though yeah. Dwayne Haskins never threw a single pass in the regular season for the team. I wouldn't be surprised if you see them, if you see guys carrying his jersey out of the tunnel the first time in Heinz Field this year. Wouldn't be surprised if there's a three sticker on a helmet, um, you know, or or something like that in regards to Dwayne Haskins. Um, because again, that was a guy who was loved in the locker room. Uh, but uh, Wes, thank you so much for joining us. It's always a pleasure to have you here from Steeler Nation Radio from the Ears and Beers podcast. Let me know they can find you, follow you, and get more of your work. Yep, uh, I host the Steelers Blitz with Arthur Motes at noon on Steelers Nation Radio. You can listen to us live, uh, Steelers.com, Steelers app, iHeart website, and iHeart app. Um, you can also get us in podcast form, commercial free, on demand, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, just search Steelers Blitz wherever you get your podcasts. And then, yeah, uh, if you are a tortured WVU soul like me, uh, Ears and Beers podcast for, for all your Mountaineer sports banter as well. Do check them out. They do. It is great work with Adam Crowley, who we've also had on this show. Thanks again, Wes, for joining us. I'm Chris Carter, host of the Locked On Steelers podcast. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter Critiques. You can get more of this show on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, and YouTube. Like this video if you saw it on YouTube and you enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe button to our YouTube channel for all of our daily episodes as well as our breaking news updates. We'll be back tomorrow with, with more. We're going to have Josh Taylor on the show. We're talking more on your Pittsburgh Steelers. We'll see you then.